Hello students, welcome to the second course bulletin. This bulletin may slightly be longer, probably a little about 10 minutes. So please bear with me because there are very important things to communicate to you. I would like to start the very first point by telling you we are in the most most important or probably the only important part in this introductory course in programming. What is that most important part? Learning programming logic through algorithms. Because once you learn programming logic, then learning C is as easy as learning A, B, C or even very, very easy. It's like trying to say the tables of 10 into 1, 10 into 2 is 20 and so on. So please try to not lose your focus, put your focus back onto your academics. The thing you'll have realized by now is you won't be able to learn by heart or by memory. It is all about understanding the subject and trying to think with a fresh mind and not coming up with any baggage from the past. This is a concern I have because I keep closely following what videos students are watching, where they are with respect to the videos. I get the feeling that students are watching these videos only during the class timetable. That is not a good plan for now. The reason I'll tell you why. Ideally, if you're extremely fast in grasping the things, the class time would be more than enough to finish off the videos. But all of us learn at different paces. Okay, for example, I myself, I'm a very, very slow learner. Okay, I take a lot of time because when I learn, I have a lot of questions. And until the questions are answered, I don't move forward. So, it is advised or it is my humble request to you, do not just read or learn only during the class timetable. Since all of you have a mobile phone or a laptop or a PC, make use of time beyond the class to go ahead and learn this content, okay? You will require extra time because there's a lot of information. I think the best time to really learn this is Early morning, if you can wake up a little early, like even at 6, 6.30 and spend one hour learning that, that will be a great, it will be a life-changing experience for you. See, we can always find excuses for not learning. There is absolutely no excuse now because this is a complete COVID-affected lifetime. We have no travel, we have no functions, no visiting the college, okay, there is no movies, no labs, very little social activity other than maybe me meeting your friends once in a while. So utilize this time. This time is not going to come back to you because the time you put now is going to give you a lot of fantastic returns in your life. All right. So work now when others are sleeping, work hard because dream big. Try to come out with a plan that you'll fulfill the wishes of yourself, of your parents. You know, think of targeting for a Google Think of targeting for a Microsoft, think of targeting for an Amazon, an Apple, okay? And don't think this is impossible because you just got to work hard, okay? If you put in best efforts in the first two, two and a half of years of engineering, you will get a dream job. Your life itself is going to change. What I am earning probably in a year, you will earn in a month, okay? That can be a, there cannot be anything more bigger motivation than that. So please take it up and work big. Now, coming back to the topic. I'll first try to answer because this is a question probably a lot of you in your, have in your mind. Like why do I take sometimes a variable as zero and sometimes why do I give a variable some initial values like one or sometimes I don't give any values to variables. So I'll explain with a very simple example. Okay, we have already taken a look at this. So here what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find the sum of natural numbers between 1 to n. Suppose let's say the user enters the value of n as 5. Now what I am doing in this particular while loop is initially I am giving sum as 0 because first time when i is 1 sum should be 0 plus 1. Next time whatever is the new value of sum, sum is 1, 1 plus 2. So sum becomes 3. Now if I don't give an initial value of sum as 0, the computer will assign sum, some random value. It could be minus 5, 93, 100, 28, minus 45,000 so on. So if you don't give it the value 0, 
Suppose it gives the value minus 5, you are not going to get a correct value of sum when you are printing the sum. That's why I'm giving it the initial value 0. Now in the same problem, why am I not giving any value to n? Even if I give a value to n, it does not make any difference because I'm asking the user to enter the value of n. So even if the computer decides to to give the value of n as 36,028, okay, sorry, 36,028. When I read n, suppose I say n is 5, this fellow will get erased and n becomes 5. But the same thing does not happen with sum and i. It depends on the values I give them because if I fail to give i1 and sum 0, this whole thing is going to end up in a mess. So let me make it clear here. The variables or the memory locations which giving an initial value affects the logic or outcome of the program. I am giving it the initial value of 0, 1 or any value depending on that particular problem. So I told you with n, n doesn't matter because when I am reading n here, the old value of n, even if it is 36,028 will get erased and replaced with the value I am going to enter which is 5. But the same thing is not going to happen with sum and i because I am not reading the value of sum and i or asking the value of sum and i from the keyboard. That's why I'm making some zero. One more example. Suppose I'm asking, okay, when initialization is optional. Suppose I want to print whether a number is positive or not. So here I'm not initializing number to any value because I'm asking the user to enter the number. So once the user enters the number, then I'm going to say, if the number is greater than zero, I'm going to print positive. So even if number is not given a value, let's say number is 52 minus 52,000 and 333. This was the random value assigned by the machine. It would not make a difference because here, suppose I enter the value 10, then this, this value is going to get overwritten with 10 and the program will run perfectly. So I hope this is clear when you should give variables initial values and when you should not give or it is optional to give values to variables. Now continuing on my a little bit of a interactive talk. First thing human tendency for all of us is to postpone things just keep postponing it okay. This postponing is a habit which gets developed over a period of time. And in order to understand why we get into this habit of postponing, for example, you sit to read, suddenly you'll see a YouTube video, you'll forget my session and you'll watch that YouTube video. From there, you'll have gone, watched about who is Mary, who Disha Patani is with right now. From there, you'll go and see which movie Deepika Padukone is acting. So you have lost the link of my subject. In order to get a better understanding of why you're doing this, please go and look at this video in the description of this particular video. A beautiful video by Tim Erden, who talks about why we tend to push things forward and what are the bad habits we accumulate. Try to watch it with closed caption on or the subtitle on. There's a CC white button in YouTube at the bottom. Click on that so you can see the subtitles and read what he is trying to talk because sometimes a foreign accent may not be very clear to you. Now this is something very funny. Students in their resume, the first line they write, I am looking for a very challenging job so that I can do something great in life. My answer to that is, my friend, you have got a challenge right in front of you now. Take up this challenge. Change your life. Why do you want to wait for your resume to show that you want a challenging job? So when a challenge is given to you, tackle it head on. Do something great in your life. Then this is another habit. You just want to ask questions just for the heck of it. Suddenly you will get five questions you will write in the comments. Before asking a question, do a little homework. Read a little from different videos. Read a little from Google. Make an effort to understand a little more and then ask questions because this is a habit which will help you solve a lot of problems in life because I am not going to be with you all your life. Maybe in next semester at the most I may be with you or maybe a little more ahead after that in projects and something. But you won't, I won't be with you all life to answer all your questions. So develop the habit of discovering a lot on yourself. But this does not mean that you are not supposed to ask questions. Please, please do ask questions, but first do a little homework because you will ask more intelligent questions and your knowledge will increase. Not that you are not asking intelligent questions now, I am just giving you a general idea here. My favorite, always draw a test table to test your logic yourself. Don't wait 
and don't post the solution in the comment section. It's not going to be published. I'm just going to delete it because it affects the learning of other students. For me, all of you are equal. There's nobody, somebody special or somebody this thing. I don't get extra salary for treating some of you specially. And even if I get extra, I'll never treat anybody differently because all of you as a teacher, if at the end of the course you tell me this was the worst course you, I had, I didn't understand anything, I'll not feel bad because maybe something is less in me. But if somebody tells me, sir, you are partial to a few of them, that will really hurt me because as a teacher, one of the important job is I should treat all of you equally. Nobody is more equal or anybody is more special. So I would not post anybody's solution in the comments. Okay. When I was learning programming logic for a year, I never understood it. And I never understood programming. We had language called Pascal. I thought, why the hell did I take computer science? You know, I thought this must be the biggest mistake of my life. Then in that one year, okay, after one year in the holidays, we had the yearly scheme. I tried to discover what is it that you learn program successfully. Then I found out that if you learn logic, then programming is a breeze. Then in my holidays, you will not believe it for a... We had very few, they had no videos, nothing that sort, it's just all books. So I took some teacher's lectures, okay, we had a teacher and my friend had a very good handwriting, he used to note down everything. I took his and spent one and one and a half month analyzing. What should have taken maybe five, six days, took me one and a half month analyzing. So programming logic is simply a test of your determination, ability to not give up, learn from mistakes, keep making mistakes, draw the test table, correct your own logic and learn it. Simply follow the learning sequence. I think some of you jump ahead here and there, assuming you know a lot and then you ask questions which are not relevant. The answer is already there in one video ahead. So just go to the sequence, be patient, repeat the video if it's required till you understand. Most importantly, all the English videos have captions or subtitles, all of them. Use them because sometimes I may not be clear, but the caption is not going to make much of a mistake. Another suggestion. Sometimes if you don't understand the English video, the Hindi option may help you a lot. Go to the Hindi version. Try to make an effort to understand it from different point of view. Re-listen re to the video, re-watch the video. That's how you're going to understand. So when you're asked to verify by a test table in your question, Please do the verification first. Test your logic and then look at the solution. Don't jump to look at the solution. I am telling you probably for the nth number of time, it will look very easy when I am solving it. Why? Because we have been doing it for 30 years now. You have been doing it not even for 30 hours or 30 days. So it's obviously going to take you a little time. Or oh, I have struggled. Okay, this was my worst experience learning logic. But it was easy once I understood it. So you have to put in efforts, draw the test table. And the only way I learned logic was because I did my own innovation of drawing the table and trying to run through the logic. So I'm giving you all the hard work I have done in a very easy manner. Sometimes you ask questions which are not relevant to the topic. I'll tell you why restrict your questions to the topic we are. The reason being, if I answer that, the other question students begin to think, oh, there is so much I don't know, which is not required because you can ask some question which is not relevant. It may make you feel great, but it will bring down other students. So a lot of times if the question is not to topic, I try to avoid answering because I have to think of the interest of all the other students of mine. Now, this is recording mistakes are going to happen 100%. Okay, this is one guarantee I can give you. I am going to make a lot of mistakes recording. Sometimes I discover immediately after recording. Sometimes I do not. So if I have made a mistake and I realize it in the description section of that video, I'll put a note saying that what was the mistake and where and you'll understand it. But please feel free to tell me any mistakes if I made in calculation explaining something in the comment section. If the video has too many mistakes, I'll re-record it. All right. Okay. One of the things is a lot of students learn coding in school. But I'll tell you out of 100 or even 200, maybe two or three really understand it. I'm not blaming anybody here. The system in school is really based on learning by memory. Okay, not making an effort to understand. And unfortunately, since as a system, we don't respect teachers, very few of you, tell me how many of you want to be teachers. So very few good teachers join schools to teach. So you don't tend to learn very well. And just by printing, doing a few things, blinking stars, you get excited, but that is not programming. Okay, so please don't feel hurt when I tell you, I'm not blaming the school. It is the way we are brought up 
that's the problem where it is there now the good news from monday i'll post the last programming logic videos using algorithms and for the entire week think of it as like a logic mela run through all the videos multiple times break your head ask me question in the comment section i'll try to answer it also i have will give you assignments for the decision making as well as the looping make an effort to solve those in, in that coming week itself so for example decision making i have posted or i will post the problems today or tomorrow morning solve them and then what i expect is i'll give you the solution by monday evening or tuesday and hopefully by thursday or friday i'll post the solution for the uh, problems using loops or repetition logic so with this i would like to wish you all the very best stay focused on your job utilize this time the covid lockdown time it is going to change your life for the better just dream big visualize you're going to be a multi millionaire use if you use this opportunity positively and effectively